Welcome to the first online lecture in the series Algorithm Design and Analysis. This one's going to be all about greedy algorithms. But before we can, you know, discuss greedy algorithms, figure out if they're correct, incorrect, come up with some cool greedy algorithms, we have to understand what a greedy algorithm is. And in order to understand that, let's take a step back. What's an algorithm really? Well, in an informal layman sense, an algorithm is just a step-by-step -step series of instructions uh, that describe the solution to some kind of problem. It's in, you know, a step-by-step -step series of instructions to solve a problem. Okay, well, what kind of problems am I talking about? Well, you think algorithms, you think computer science, so you might have computer science-esque type problems you need to solve. For example, given a graph and a source node and a target node, find the shortest path in that graph from the source to the target, from S to T usually. That's a typical computer science problem, you know, shortest path in a graph. But, you know, algorithms are completely separate from computer science, completely, you know, decoupled from computers. It can be any kind of problem, like a real world problem, practical problem, like uh, imagine you're working for a logistics company and you have a whole bunch of packages you need to ship, right? And you have shipping containers that you can put these packages into. Well, each package might have a weight, each shipping container might have a total weight capacity that you can't exceed, and you have to figure out a way to organize these packages into shipping containers such that you use the fewest number of shipping containers possible. Well, that requires an algorithm to solve that. How am I going to organize things? How am I going to figure out what the next item I put in the shipping container is, etc.? Uh, so it could be a problem like that too. And it might be a problem that you don't even really think about as a problem. For instance, you could be playing a game of chess. Well, that, that's a problem. What problem are you trying to solve there? Well, you're trying to win the game, right? Well, what would be an algorithm? Well, the algorithm would be a way to select certain moves, certain sequence of moves that you're going to use in order to complete the game and hopefully win the game. Okay. Well, those are all problems. They all must have algorithms that can solve them. That makes sense. But are these difficult problems to solve? Well, oftentimes what makes a problem difficult is doing something now, doing something in the short term can affect, you know, can have drastic effects later on when you're trying to solve the problem. For instance, in the shortest path problem in a graph, you might say, okay, I'm going to start at node S and I'm going to try to get to node T. I'm going to go from node S to node one, then to node two, then to node five, seven, etc. And maybe there's millions and millions of nodes in this graph. And it just so happens choosing to go to node one as your first step, you know, has drastic implications down the line. It's, you know, constrained you that, okay, well now, you know, 500, 5,000, 5 million steps later, I can no longer go to node, you know, 7 billion or something like that. And I mean, how can you really grasp or see that far into the future to really say, oh, you know what, maybe I shouldn't choose node one here. It's this initial choice that can have, you know, grand implications later on. With the shipping containers, it might make sense, okay, well, you know what, I'll take this package that weighs 10 pounds and let's put that into this shipping container. Well, it just so happens maybe that leaves you with an awkward, you know, remaining weight in that shipping container. It just so happens the packages you have remaining are awkward as well and later down the line that means you can't get an optimal or a fewest number of shipping containers needed to ship the packages and you've backed yourself into a corner. Again, that might, you know, not be obvious at all in the short term, but it has these everlasting effects. In the game of chess, if you've played chess before, you know that, you know, it's very difficult to see, well, unless you're a very good player, you know, maybe one step into the future, two steps into the future, three steps. It's almost hopeless to look at 10 steps into the future, 20 steps, etc., unless you're a grandmaster or something like that. But, you know, move, taking a choice or moving a piece on a chessboard can have, you know, major implications later down the line. Hmm. So these could be hard problems. There's an inherent complexity to these problems such that, okay, the choice I make right now could, you know, basically screw me later on down the road. It might constrain me, might, uh, you know, put me in a situation where, oh man, if only I didn't make that decision at the very beginning or early on, I would have had, you know, a better opportunity, a better solution available to me. Huh. So these problems are a little complicated, or at least they have a layer of complexity, some kind of notion of complexity in them. 
So what's a greedy algorithm? Well, in essence, what a greedy algorithm says is, okay, yeah, there might be this inherent complexity in this problem where what I do now has effects later on, but you know what? I don't care about it. The greedy solution or a greedy algorithm, what it says is I'm going to use a certain rule or heuristic. We'll get into that in a, a minute, but basically it says I'm going to do what's good for me now and I'm not going to worry about it, how it affects me later on down the line. I'm just going to do what's good for me now based off this rule, my greedy rule, and I'm just going to kind of hope things work out. So in the shortest path problem in a graph, a greedy solution might be, okay, go to the closest node. So find the least weighted edge, take that edge to the next node, that's gonna be my path. And then keep repeating, go to the next closest node, go to the next closest node until you get to your target node T. That might be the greedy rule for that particular algorithm. For the shipping container example, a greedy rule that we might follow in the short term is take the least weighted package and just put it into the shipping container. Don't worry about any kind of weird configuration down the line that uh, might, you know, like I said, back us up into a corner, give us a bad solution. I don't worry about that. I don't worry about that complexity. I'm greedy. I just care what's good for me now. Take the least weighted package, put into the shipping container. When a shipping container gets, you know, too full, it can't take the next one, go to a new one, start filling that one with the, the least, weight, uh, least weighted items. Okay, fair enough. With chess. What might be a greedy rule there? It might be something like, okay, uh, I'm going to ignore all the complexity and you know potential future moves that this would cause. I'm just gonna do the best move for me right now. I'm gonna try to capture uh, the highest valued piece my opponent has this turn. So that might lead to you to doing something like taking their queen this turn, uh, but you know five turns down the line, they get you in checkmate because of it. And these greedy rules, they don't seem smart. They don't seem clever. And in some sense, they seem lazy, these greedy algorithms, right? Because going back to that chess example, okay, you make a move where you take your opponent's queen, but if you're actually smart and clever about the game, maybe you could have done something like sacrifice your rook this turn, and you know that guarantees checkmate 15 moves down the line. And in some kind of world, you're right. I mean, greedy algorithms, no one's really saying that they're super, super intelligent, so at least not super clever. They're usually pretty easy to come up with, and that's one of their advantages. So greedy algorithms, we'll list out some advantages and disadvantages. Easy to think of. Now you might say that's a pretty weak, you know, advantage. And like, uh, you know, this is a university course. We're supposed to be smart. We're supposed to come up with, you know, hard to think of solutions. But I mean, a solution that's simplistic in this, you know, in this nature. Everything else, you know, being kept equal is a better solution than one one that's very very complicated to understand. And you know, easy to think of. There's something lurking in the background here. I mean, who really likes to code, right? I don't like to code. Maybe you like to code, maybe you haven't got sick of it yet, but these are easy to implement. Easy to implement, easy to code. Again, these might not be problems that are computer science specific. And again, with the shipping containers, it's easy to tell your employees, okay, find the least uh, weighted item and put it into the shipping container. It might be very complicated if you had to okay, ahead of time, brute force all the potential solutions and figure out you know, an optimal solution here. It's just easier to do this. Okay. So they're easy to think of, easy to implement. That's kind of what they got going for them. What do they have going against them? Well, we've already you know, been talking about it. Just because it's a good move now, you know, it's a good idea to do something in the short term, doesn't mean it's going to be a good idea to do it in the long term. So, may lead to, I'll just say bad, bad solutions.
How bad? Well, let's look at that shortest uh, graph example. Shortest path in a graph example. So this is my S, this is my T. And I'm going to have two paths in this graph. Hmm. What weights am I going to put on this? Maybe 1 here, 10 here, 10 here, and then 10 to the power 10 on this edge. So if we're using a greedy solution that says, OK, and you know what, I'll label these nodes. Why not? If I am using a greedy uh, algorithm that says, OK, I start at S, find the least weighted edge, and take it. OK, well, that's going to take me to this node. And it says, OK, now find the least weighted edge from this node and take it. Boom. And what do I have? Well, I found a path from S to T. What's the length of that path? Well, it's 10 to the power 10 plus 1. Is that the shortest path in this graph? No, of course not. It would be 10 plus 10, which is 20. So that, you know, greedy algorithm, not great. Are there situations where a greedy algorithm would find a shortest path? Yeah, of course there is. Imagine, uh, imagine this one. So what would the greedy algorithm do? Same one, just take the shortest uh, edge. What would our greedy algorithm do in this case? Well, it takes this path up here, finds the shortest path. The shortest path is from S to 1 and from 1 to T to, uh, and this one's no longer the shortest path here. So there's nothing saying that a greedy algorithm can't do well, but it seems like greedy algorithms may lead to bad solutions. So it seems like a toss up. It seems like you're gambling a little bit on some of these greedy algorithms. Or are we? What if I were to tell you that there are some problems out there that seem difficult to solve, that seem complicated, just like the problems I've been telling you so far. However, there exists greedy algorithms to these problems that are optimal. What do I mean when I say a greedy algorithm is optimal? Well, we say A for algorithm. We say a greedy algorithm A is optimal if and only if for all problem instances A returns an optimal solution. For all problem instances, our greedy algorithm returns an optimal solution. If that's true, then our greedy algorithm A is an optimal greedy algorithm, is an optimal algorithm. Well, what th would that mean here? Well, if we came up with a greedy algorithm to find the shortest path in the graph from S to T, that means no matter what graph we're given, it's going to find a shortest path from S to T. Okay? It doesn't you know, this particular one I just described isn't optimal. It doesn't mean that if there exists a graph in which it returns an optimal solution is an optimal algorithm. No, no, no. It has to be for all graphs. Okay. Well, that's a pretty powerful statement, but that's what we're looking for. We're looking for greedy algorithms where this is the case. So if that's what it means for A, a greedy algorithm A to be optimal, what does it mean for it to be suboptimal? We say A is suboptimal and if it's suboptimal it's just the opposite of optimal so we can just kind of take the negation of this logical statement and say okay A is suboptimal if and only if there exists a problem instance in which A returns a suboptimal solution. That's not how you spell suboptimal. I told you before I'm a bad speller, but I'm not that bad.
returns a suboptimal solution. So over here, right away, it should be clear that the greedy algorithm I described, in which at every step, I just take the next shortest edge to the next uh, or the next closest node. This is a suboptimal solution to the shortest path problem. Why? Well, I already showed you the counterexample. This one. This is a counterexample to prove that that algorithm I described, where we just go to the next closest node and repeat till we find t, or path to t, is a suboptimal solution. Why? Well, this one finds, you know, like I said, shortest path is 10 to the power 10 plus 1, but the shortest path is actually 20. Okay. So one thing I'll say right off the bat here is it's a lot easier, in general, of course, to prove a greedy algorithm is suboptimal or incorrect than it is to prove a greedy algorithm is optimal or correct. Why is that? Well, in order to prove a greedy algorithm is suboptimal, I just have to show a counterexample. And I've done that here. Okay, easy enough. Boom. We've proven it incorrect. We've proven it suboptimal. How do you prove it's optimal? Well, if I give you an example where it returns an optimal solution, so I can give you an example where this particular greedy algorithm I described returns a shortest path in the graph, that doesn't mean it's optimal. Just because it works for one graph does not mean it works for, you know, all graphs. We have a for all problem instances here. And I might be able to show it works for five different graphs or 10 different graphs or a billion different graphs. Doesn't matter. Any finite number of graphs I show it works for does not have any implication on the fact of if it's optimal or suboptimal. We might start to gain some confidence to it, but it certainly isn't a proof that it's an optimal solution. So in the next video, we're going to take a look at proving some greedy algorithms are suboptimal. Then in the video after that, probably, we'll see how it goes. We'll prove, show how to prove a greedy algorithm is optimal. I'm just gonna reiterate exactly what a greedy algorithm is. Well, these problems where we have a series of choices to make, right? We did like the shortest graph, shipping containers, game of chess, choosing moves, deciding which package to put in next, uh, deciding which edge to take next. Next, um, A greedy algorithm just follows a simple rule or heuristic each time it needs to make a choice. So here was the shortest path. Uh, for the shipping container one, we said could be the least weighted package. Uh, for the chess one, you know, the most weighted move, but we could choose any rule, any heuristic for that. So, you know, there's nothing saying that for instance, the shipping container one, we say put the heaviest object in or put the biggest one in. Now that may be a good idea, may not be a good idea, but certainly a greedy algorithm. So deciding to put the biggest item in every time or deciding to put the smallest item in every time, both of those are greedy algorithms because that every step is following a simple rule and not really caring about the long-term effects, just caring about the short-term you know, choice it has to make at the time. And that's in essence what a greedy algorithm is. It's certainly not a formal definition of one. Uh, we're not going to get into any kind of formal definitions of greedy algorithms. There is some stuff, if you're interested, I uh, suggest looking up matroids. Um, it's kind of a formalism of greedy algorithms. But even then, there's some fine print there. But that's enough for now, and that matroid stuff is certainly outside the scope of this course. But that's what a greedy algorithm is. Uh, we'll see some greedy algorithms next time and prove that they're suboptimal. Thank you.